eBay sellers, it's Suzanne and welcome to Vintage Land. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I have another Money Making Mondays Vintage Edition for you. The sales in this video come from my Facebook group where every Monday we have a thread called Money Making Mondays where sellers can post what they found, where they found it, how much they paid for it, and most importantly, how much it sold for, so that you can see the real selling prices of these types of items. This thread is usually very long, up to 500 items. So it's getting harder and harder to pick which ones to put in the video. But I wanna thank everyone who contributes because we can all learn from each other and I really appreciate the participation in this thread on my Facebook group. So let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start off with Eileen Cole, who has the cover photo this time. And she sold this set of Owl Kurok glasses. She said, I bought these vintage barware glasses for $27 at a flea market, listed for $69.50 and took a best offer of $60 plus shipping, sold in about 10 days. That was probably a shipping nightmare, <laughs> but maybe not for those of you that like to ship these kinds of items, but it was a set of seven glasses. So keep that in mind when you are picking items is, do I want to ship this? Sometimes the answer is yes, absolutely. But just think about that before you buy the items. Okay, next up is Jill. She sold this quilting book. She said, this was my grandma's sold in a week. She sold it for $29.99 and it's a Christmas quilt block of the month book from 1995. So that is definitely vintage. If it's over 20 years old, it is considered vintage. So free to her and sold for 30 bucks. Okay, next up is Lori bought from Goodwill Bins for 45 cents in September still had the original box, sold for $44.95 plus shipping in three months. This is a vintage Webster's Dictionary from 1945. So that's another item in the books you could just quickly look for are vintage dictionaries. She bought this for 45 cents, sold it for $44.95. And then we have another one, sort of like it, from Ginger bought about a week ago at an estate sale for $4, sold for best offer of $80 plus shipping. This one is a little bit older from 1934, but it's Webster's new International Dictionary of English second edition. So $4 and it sold for 80. Okay, next is Beverly. This is actually some ephemera, which is paper items from the past. She paid $5 for this at an estate sale, sold at seven day auction with five bids for $139.50 plus shipping. This is an antique 1890s Knowles Taylor and Knowles Liverpool, Ohio souvenir. So it's just a little booklet that she paid $5 for and it sold for $139.50. So look at that paper stuff. Okay, next is Brianna. She bought this for $8 at a local thrift store, listed for a couple of weeks. Vintage 80s Levi denim trucker jacket, sold for $45. So $8 into $45. So look through those jackets because this is on my bolo list. I have not found one yet, but I always look specifically for trucker jackets in the jacket section. Okay, next up is Ari. She found this as she was walking out of Goodwill for $3, listed for $34 and sold for 30 in one day on best offer. This is a vintage Polaroid logo long sleeve shirt. And just a note on the Polaroid items, stores like Kohl's are making these now retro. So they're not vintage, but they're made to look like vintage. So do your homework on those types of items, especially vintage looking t-shirts because they may not actually be vintage 
and you could get in trouble on eBay for mislabeling them as vintage when they're not. Okay, this is a fun one from Jada. She says, this was my favorite find ever. I got it for $3 at a local thrift store, sold for $75 plus shipping in less than two weeks. This is a vintage Pepsi sweater. Um, if that does not say 1980s, nothing does. <laughs> Look at all those Pepsi logos on that sweater. And it sold for $75. She only paid $3. That is a fun sale. Okay, now we've got Savannah. She bought this at an estate yard sale for $1, listed it for $39.99 and accepted an offer of $32 after two weeks. It had a small stain on the front, which I disclosed. And this is a vintage nightgown. So $1 and it sold for $32. Next up is Pat who bought this groovy jacket at an auction for $4, took a best offer of $119, took eight days to sell. This is a vintage fish scale patchwork leather snap button jacket from the 70s. So $4 and it sold for $119. And that is just really, that's groovy. That is 1970s. Um, vintage clothing is so much fun when you find something like this. Okay, next is Carol Kirk. Sold this vintage new old stock pea coat for a best offer of $45 plus shipping. I bought it at Goodwill for $4.59 and it took almost a year to sell. So there you can see it is quite Jackie O looking, the style there. And if you don't know what NOS means, that is new old stock, which means it is a vintage item that's still in brand new condition, like with the tags on it or in the packaging. So NOS is an eBay acronym. Anyway, she paid $4.59 and sold it for $45. Next up is Katya. She sold this vintage 50s men's smoking jacket for $125. And she's got some commentary here. Bought this at the bins, weighed exactly one pound, so cost me $1.59. I went through a bin that was already picked over, noticed the quality of the garment and listed it for $150 sold for a best offer of $125 in about a week. So just a note on this item. Uh, she said that she found it in a bin that was picked over, which means you don't know who's been there before you and what they know. Maybe everybody before her that looked in that bin doesn't sell clothing. So they left it behind, they didn't even look at it, they didn't care. So keep that in mind when you are out treasure hunting, you don't know what you're gonna find. You don't know when it was put out. You don't know who has been there ahead of you. And these things pop up all the time. So you just have to keep an open mind that you are going to find items that you can sell for high profit. They are out there and they're gonna appear in front of you at any time. Next up is Sue Ann. She bought this at an estate sale for $5, sold in two weeks. This is a Arnold Military Police tin Jeep toy, 1949 and 1950s. It sold for $100. This listing shows the magic of selling vintage items because they're limited in number. They're not gonna be made anymore. That's it. What's out there is out there, but they keep showing up as more and more people are downsizing or passing away in their estate gets put up for sale, all kinds of stuff like this is out there. So this video is proof that you can find these things and you're not gonna see these profit margins on wholesale or liquidation. The money is in vintage items. Next up is Ashley who paid 25 cents for this at the local Habitat for Humanity Restore, sold in about a week. This is a vintage 1981 Tonka football player, uh, Cleveland Browns. It's like a figurine. And I'm including this one because she said she got it at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. You might assume that store is only for furniture and home items, but 
all kinds of things show up in there. And this is proof of that. So if you have a Habitat for Humanity Restore near you, you might want to check that out and see what other kinds of items they have in there. Next up is Carol Kirk again. She said, with the Netflix series, The Queen's Gambit being such a hit right now, I decided to list my husband's vintage chess set that we don't have room to display anymore. It sold last night for a best offer of $100 and took about two weeks to sell. A great time to list chess sets. That is a great point. Pay attention to what's going on in popular culture, these streaming channels, all of their uh, original shows, Netflix originals, Prime originals. What are people watching? If you go to those streaming channels, you'll see a category that says popular now or trending. And that's where you can look at what people are watching and see if there are any items that you could list that correlate with those popular shows. Now we have Larissa. She paid $30 on Facebook Marketplace and sold for full price plus shipping in about three to four weeks. This is a vintage Duracraft dollhouse and it sold for $299.99 and she paid $30 for it. So if you're not looking at your local Facebook groups or Facebook marketplace, you might be missing out. Keep in mind that not everybody wants to learn eBay. They find it overwhelming, challenging. They're not confident to do it. And maybe they just want to get rid of things quickly and locally and get that quick cash for whatever they need. So we've been noticing, especially over the past year with COVID, more and more things are showing up on Facebook Marketplace. And if you are diligent and look at it frequently, you can find all kinds of high profit items that you can sell because eBay selling is a skill. Not everybody can do it. Not everybody wants to do it. So you have that in your favor where you can look at your local Facebook buy and sell groups or marketplace and find things to flip. Okay, next up is Denzel. He said, literally, as the announcement of the Cleveland Indians name change comes out, this sale happens. 1995 Cleveland Indians American League Champs World Series mug. And he paid $3 for this and sold it for $19.99. So check your Cleveland Indian stuff and get it listed if it's in your death pile. And we have Denzel again with some baseball cards bought for three cents a piece in a large lot. And he sold this lot for $15.50. Okay, Olivia, she sold this set of mid-century modern coupe cereal bowls, a set of six and they sold for $89.99, and she has a little bit of a backstory here. This is from the 30-piece set I bought for $120 on an online auction a few weeks ago. Sold these six bowls for $90 plus shipping. The cost for the lot, if I just divided the cost by the number of pieces, was $24.42. The flip side is that the Bread plates I sold last week for $100 are on their way back because the buyer thought they were nine inch, not seven inch. Like it said, clearly all over the place on the listing. And then an emoji of a face palm. <laughs> and yes, that is so frustrating when you go to all the trouble to explain everything, put measurements, note these things multiple times in your listing and the buyer still doesn't read it, uh, that's just occupational hazard for being an eBay seller because buyers just don't read things. They're in a hurry. They rush through it. They just click on the listing, look at the picture and then buy it. And it's very frustrating when this happens and you've done everything right. And I'll tell you, I get a double dose of this from um, <laughs> some of my YouTube viewers who will uh, comment on a video and I have explained something the best way I can explain it. I mean, 
you know how long my videos are when I'm explaining something. Uh, the level of detail is just there. And they don't watch the video. They just start peppering me with questions. And I was like, well, if you go to 23 minutes in the video, that's where this is explained. So uh, that's just human nature. People don't read these things. They don't pay attention. They look at the pictures. And unfortunately, it's just something we have to deal with. Um, I had a return like this a few months ago. Somebody bought a Starbucks mug for $70. And then she realized that it was the regular size mug, not the demi tasse mug, and she returned it. And that's very rare for collectibles that they're returned. But unfortunately, people don't read the listings, so that's just something we have to deal with. So sorry that happened, Olivia, but welcome to the club. <laughs> okay, now we've got Cindy Minders. She paid $3 at a thrift store took a couple of months to sell, accepted an offer of $90. This is a vintage Henry Dreyfus Art Deco thermos with glass top. And that's definitely very vintage looking. $3 and sold it for 90. Ken McNamara taking a break from selling pots and pans. <laughs> no, not really, he just sells everything. I like to pick on him for his pots and pans. He sold this Old Spice for $42. He bought it for $2 at a Goodwill, sold it in two days. Vintage Old Spice has always done well for me. This bottle was from 1980 and most buyers purchased them to use. And I don't ever remember even seeing the green Old Spice. I remember the red uh, with the white bottle and the red box. Um, so this is a cool item, $2 and sold for 42. Now we've got Gianni and she said, cousin had listed it for $10. I said, stop, I'll sell it. Took about a month, sold for best offer of $140 plus $72 shipping going to Australia. This is a vintage Italian art glass bottle decanter with uh, a uh, plunge kind of top on it. That is gorgeous. And that is so vintage looking. <laughs> I would have picked that up too, but a uh, good thing that she rescued her cousin who was going to sell it for 10 bucks. And she got more than 10 times that price when she listed it. Now we've got Cindy again, accepted offer of $150, paid $3 almost two years ago. This is a rare Mid-century modern 1960s Mark Belair California art pottery horse. Whew, that was a lot to say. And $3 sold it for 150. Wow, that is amazing. <laughs> all of those little things in the back look the same to me. So I don't know how you guys figure that out because I don't pick all of them up and look at them. I guess I should. Okay, now we've got Nicole who sold this vintage bathroom accessory. She paid $1.99 for it and it sold for $25.49. And it's a uh, gold tone metal toothbrush and cup holder for the vanity. Definitely vintage looking. Heather bought off Facebook Marketplace for $10. Took about three months to sell, but got full price. Vintage set of two Harley Davidson tapestry throw pillows with motorcycles, Eagle and USA, and she sold them for $59.99. $10 investment on that. Ginger bought at a garage sale a couple of months ago for a dollar, sold for full asking price of $39.99. Vintage Beater Lack Wolves blanket. That is very cool looking. I might have bought that and kept it for myself. <laughs> okay, next up is Wendy. She paid $25 at Goodwill, sold for 200 plus shipping in less than two weeks. Vintage 1978 Manhattan poster. $25 sold for 200. Kim Furman paid $5 for the entire lot at an estate sale, sold in about two months. This is rare vintage 80s AWA wrestling autograph shirt, VHS and magazine, I think. $250, her investment was $5 at an estate sale. So 
that just goes to show you that not everything at an estate sale is priced up. You just have to look through everything and look them up on completed listings to see. Now we've got Tamsin who sold this vintage Capodimonte chandelier. I probably butchered that, so sorry. Um, Italian art glass globes with ceramic flowers. She sold this for 798 Canadian dollars. And she's got a little story here. Paid $50 at a thrift store for a big box of broken Capodimonte chandeliers. Took them all apart and was able to create this one have two other small that are ready to go and waiting on a replacement globe for another one that will sell for a similar price to this one. It was only listed two weeks. So her initial investment was $50 and just part of it sold for almost 800. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. And on to some Christmas items. Yes, it's December, but Christmas does sell all year. But let's take a look at what sold this month. Julie sold this vintage lot of 11 assorted mixed wood Christmas ornaments for $15, but she has a story. She says, here's proof that we shouldn't let our personal feelings get involved. I received these in a lot that I paid $2 from a local thrift store. I took out the collectible ornaments and was about to go throw out the rest of them, but decided to put them in a lot. Sold that in less than three days for best offer of $15. So basically she was gonna trash these and uh, they ended up selling. So good for you, Julie. <laughs> now we've got Mark, paid a few cents as part of a large lot of vintage Christmas bulbs, sold for $28 plus $8 shipping. These are uh, green vintage GE lighted Christmas bulbs so um, I guess you could use them as decoration or put them on your tree, but just a few cents and he sold them for $28. And now we've got Sharon, paid $9 at Goodwill, no box, just the styrofoam holder, sold in less than a month for $60. 1984 Moorhead Anesco Holly Babes Nativity Set, so a nativity set. $9 and sold it for 60. Okay, Cindy has these blow mold candles. Set of two vintage 42 inch blow mold candles, electric working. She paid $5 after her discount and they sold for 80. Okay, and now we have Angela. She says free on the side of the road. Penguin blow mold igloo. $140 and she just found it on the side of the road. Somebody threw it away. So somebody else's trash is definitely our treasure. <laughs> and last we've got Christy who paid $30 at an estate sale, sold for $199.95 plus $70 shipping, shipped from the East Coast to the West Coast and arrived in two days. Now this was on December 14th. So apparently her package did not get caught up in the backlog of delayed packages that a lot of us are seeing right now. So just keep the faith that your item's gonna get there. Uh, this is a vintage sapphire aluminum Christmas tree, six foot tall. And again, she paid $30 at an estate sale and sold it for 200. Okay, that wraps up another vintage edition of Money Making Mondays. Thank you again to everyone who participates because thousands of people learn from this thread every week. And it is long, over 500 comments sometimes, but there's so much information there that can help you be a better picker and a better seller. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.